Hey everyone, it's Watsi. And we're back from our short, not hiatus, with the official Hainai recap. Since this recap got long, we've actually divided it by act. So today we'll be listening to the recap for Act 1. And we'll be dropping the recap for Act 2 in two days. Since Hainai has been running for a while, and it's pretty plot-heavy, we wanted to recap the events of Acts 1, 2, and 3, so that people who aren't able to re-listen to the episodes are still able to follow the story. And while we're super grateful to everyone who does, we love you so much, we hope that this makes things easier for everybody. And it was super fun to revisit where we've come from, as we finally resolve many of the big mysteries that we've set up since Act 1. Thank you so much for your continued support, and we hope you enjoy! Hainai, literally translated to Hai Mom, follows Maridatuin, a Filipina immigrant with a babaylan, or shaman, nanai, or mother, who lived peacefully in the heart of Toronto for a few years as a permanent resident, before one day, that peace was shattered when her downstairs neighbor, Laura Nichols, was attacked by a horrific, gigantic, rotting thing. Because of Mary's childhood experiences with the supernatural, and her nanai's teachings, she was able to fend off the horrific monster and save Laura from getting killed. After the incident, she was called in for questioning by two very unique Toronto detectives, Detective Donner and Detective Murphy. She would then go on to reveal her strange magical background and assist them in hunting down the monster. Eventually realizing that the monster, made up of the corpses of animals and a single human, had somehow been summoned by these vintage buttons that Laura had bought some weeks before, Mary destroys the buttons, while Donner and Murphy protect her from the rotting thing's attacks. Following this incident, Donner and Mary would meet and investigate other instances of supernatural, with Donner revealing that before Mary, they would often only find the corpses in the aftermath of these strange events. But now, because of Mary, they'd be able to stop them from happening. All this took place in Episode 1, Bulok, or Rot. In Episode 2, Ginau, or Cold, Mary is invited by Detective Donner to follow a lead about cursed items, leading them to stop a ghost from feeding off of a sad, lonely woman who only wanted a child. After being knocked unconscious and nearly frozen, Mary, with Donner's aid, is able to confront the ghost. From this cold ghost, they learn of the existence of something or someone, called the Benefactor, who seemed to have some relation to the supernatural attacks and the cursed objects that sparked them. In Episode 3, Oras, or Time, Laura seems to be recovering from her traumatic experience, hunting for artifacts that she asked Mary to double-check, in order to ensure they're not cursed. Eventually, Mary gets tired of being asked over and over. When she tries to meet with Laura, no strings attached, her friend seems to go MIA. She calls Donner and Murphy for help, and Murphy calls a TV guru, Guru Mahadev, the last person aware of Laura's whereabouts. They track her to an old antique shop. There, Murphy and Mary are trapped in a strange miasma of manifested fear, and eventually Mary finds Laura trapped in a time loop of the moments right before she was attacked by the rotting thing. After finally breaking Laura free of this loop, the three reunite and encounter another ghost tied to a cursed clock. This ghost was George Langford, and he repeats the warning the previous ghost provided about a mysterious figure called the Benefactor. But then, a locket that Laura found in one of her vintage hunts manifests a mysterious woman who seems to defeat George Langford and set them free. In Episode 4, Multo, or Apparition, Amateur ghost hunter Evelyn Y. encounters a legendary ghost of an axe-wielding murderer in the University of Toronto campus. 
Her encounter attracts the detective's attention, and they bring Mary with them to investigate. In her recordings, Evelyn also accidentally stumbles on a strange whistling man, who seems to appear whenever these supernatural occurrences happen. Mary and the others are able to destroy the cursed object manifesting the axe murderer ghost, realizing that it had been kept dormant by the presence of an opposing good magical object, similar to the locket Laura found, until the good object had been removed. In Episode 5, Kanta, or Song, Donner and Mary investigate an abandoned building and find a weakness of the veil, which separates life from death. It traps the ghost of a homeless woman, Alice James, who Mary comforts by singing along with her, eventually allowing her to peacefully pass on. In episode 6, Larawan, or Portrait, Murphy gets in touch with the fake Guru Mahadev, flirting with the real man behind the fake beard, Ashvin. Mary and Laura visit an antiques market and stumble upon the portrait of George Langford, who tried to kill them in episode 3. They purchase an object Mary sees as cursed, a signet ring that once belonged to George Langford. Mary uses up much of her magic to contain it. As they're about to leave, Mary feels an entirely different cursed object, and she and Laura enter a tent, stepping into a horrible, painted nightmare world. In order to find the new cursed object, Mary releases the signet ring, which contains another ghost of George Langford. Langford recognizes another ghost trapped in a nearby cursed painting, one called Jean-Paul Renard. Mary, using magic and wearing Laura's locket, is mistaken for a woman named Mary Ann, who seems to be the locket ghost who manifested in episode 3 and saved them. George Langford eventually realizes Mary is in his old colleague, and attempts to take control. Laura interrupts by destroying the painting and Jean-Paul Renard in the process, but Langford nearly triumphs, so Mary summons a last resort store of immense power from deep within, able to recapture Langford in the ring. In Episode 7, Panawagan, or Summoning, Mary calls the others in for a ritual where she aims to summon Langford and get answers out of him about the mysterious benefactor. Ashvin also arrives to deliver herbal ingredients for Mary's ritual, awkwardly greeted by Murphy, who he previously began a relationship with. Mary invites Ashvin to join Summoning, believing that he has the same knowledge and background in magic that she does. When she asks if he has a protective item like an amulet, he lies and says yes. When Mary enacts her ritual, Langford is at first susceptible to the idea of an ally in taking the benefactor down, but is scared off when the benefactor realizes he's alive. Langford breaks free without their knowledge, attaching himself to a distressed and frightened Ashvin who is the only one unprotected in the room. Ashvin storms off without anyone noticing the possession. In Episode 8, Panaginip, or Dream, Mary speaks to her ex-girlfriend Ira, who warns her of bad omens appearing in the Philippines in relation to bugs, but confirms that her nana is doing fine. It's revealed that Donner stayed in Mary's apartment to make sure she's not being targeted after the Langford debacle. Mary then dreams of another Toronto, full of strange horrors, with someone walking beside her and someone following them from afar. She meets a man from her future who tells her she saves him later, confirming that the dream is, at least in part, prophetic. Donner wakes up, terrified that Mary has disappeared, finding her in a nearby old house where she's helped a harmless spirit. Donner berates her for going off on her own, clearly afraid for her safety. In Episode 9, Cuento, or Story, former radio DJ turned podcaster, DJ in the Dark, has guests tell their stories of the supernatural in Toronto. The first caller, JD, talks about a smoking cabinet that turned out to be haunted, which tried to absorb him and his roommates. He then mentions how a bunch of strangers saved them, including a dark-haired woman who used some magic, and two companions he thinks might have been cops, Mary, Donner, and Murphy. The second caller, Lynn P., was walking near a park at night when an Indian man stood there, unmoving. For a moment, she thinks there might be two people, but looking again, it's just the one man. 
The next time she walks there, she sees the man in exactly the same place, unmoving, until he's harassed by two bigger men. He hands them something that seems to enamor them, and as she's about to leave, the Indian man looks at her with inhumanly neon blue eyes, waving at her before walking away. This is later revealed to have been the possessed Ashvin. The third caller, Mary S., talks about jogging around the St. Clair and Bathurst area park trails, encountering a homeless man sleeping on a bench, to whom she gives five dollars. On the trail, it starts to get unnaturally dark, and she finds herself near the tunnel of an underpass, pitch black and unlit. In it, she sees a horrific, monstrous shadow. Paralyzed by fear, she snapped out of it by someone singing Danny Boy behind her, the homeless man who enters a tunnel. She hears horrific inhuman screams and gore, but sees nothing until the lights come back on and the unharmed homeless man thanks her for the five dollars before disappearing. The last caller, Jake, talks about his time as a gardener for rich old money influencer Vanessa Bartolotti at her bridal path estate. He spies on Vanessa speaking to an old friend who wore a fine suit and cufflinks. When he departs, the mysterious friend drops one of his cufflinks, which Jake picks up and keeps. He later sees an old back room of the mansion through a window and spies the horrific, bloody face within. So when he reports a threat to Vanessa, she sends him home. The last moments of his call are spent obsessing over a cufflink in his possession, before cutting off. In episode 10, Sinapian, or Possessed, it's been a month since Donner and Mary have talked to each other, and Langford has taken control over Ashvin and his latent natural magical ability, preventing him from responding to Murphy's concerned calls. Evelyn Y. from episode 4, assist them in researching George Langford and the group he was part of, called the Ordo. Later, she calls the group from Ashvin's shop in a panic. They rush over to find that a powerful and enormous magical miasma has taken over the whole street, trapping Evelyn and other civilians, intending to absorb their deaths to empower Langford and help him against the benefactor. They then realize Ashvin has been possessed by George Langford the whole time, his natural magic used to power this miasma. When Mary tries to dispel it with a powerful, true name spell, it doesn't work, and they realize that George Langford isn't his true name. Returning to Evelyn's notes, they find a photo of George Langford which reveals he was a secret lover of the original Langford, Friedrich. They then discover a group photo of the Ordo, which reveals his real name, George May. The group returns to the miasma and Mary confronts George May, distracting him long enough for Laura to get Evelyn to safety. When Mary's attempt to overcome George May fails, and he tries to kill her, Donner takes the blow, protected by the amulet Mary blessed for him, a crucifix that his nan had given him. Murphy comes in and attempts to attack George May, but when he's violently thrown back, Ashvin begins to struggle against George May's possession, finally taking hold of his own magic. After the miasma is dispelled, Ashvin reveals why he never believed in magic, a skepticism rooted in his faith healer parents' deaths. Now, however, he wants to learn more, and Mary promises to help guide him. After reuniting, Evelyn reveals to the group that she wasn't the one who discovered the two photos, which led them to George May's true name, implying that someone else gave them those answers in secret. And that was Act 1. We'll be continuing with the recap of Act 2 in two days. So don't forget to follow Hainai wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss it. And as always, thank you. We love you, and hanggang sa muli. You're listening to Hainai 
by Motsi Dapul. <laughs>